Here are some of the biggest mistakes when working with Affinity Photo. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer. Let's get started. Even though some of these mistakes might sound simple, they even happen to me on a regular basis. So let's talk about them. You might remember this project I did for a Benny production contest. And here I made several of these mistakes. So let's talk about the first one. And that is the resolution of your document. So when we go up here and check on the size, you can see that my canvas only has a resolution of 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels. That is more than enough for this contest and it's also good for a wallpaper. But if I ever want to crop into the picture to show details or I wanted to print it in a larger size, the resolution is simply too small for that. So all of these hours of work are in vain. And this brings us directly to our second biggest mistake, the resolution of the files and overlays you're using inside of your composition. Even if you use a high resolution canvas, you also need to have high resolution assets at the same time. So when we zoom into this work, you can see here that the flames have a nice resolution and even the smoke in the background has a good resolution. But when we look over here on these trees, you can see that they are pretty low resolution. They don't really mix up with the rest of the image. So that's actually a mistake if I ever wanted to print this. Also, by the way, my newest online course is out where I show you a beautiful and simple method to get these amazing colors that professional photographers get when they edit their photos. This is absolutely beginner friendly because we are not using any kind of adjustment layers, any kind of complexity. Instead, we are working with overlays and blend modes. I'm showing you how to create your own overlays, but also I have included 40 overlays that you can use right away and over 50 colors to choose from so you can get started right away. Let's talk about the third biggest mistake. You should try to avoid working in a destructive way as much as possible because it's really hard to go back from that. Now, what does it actually mean? Anything that changes the content of a pixel layer is a destructive method. How do you work non-destructive? Well, there's actually multiple ways to do that. Use these adjustment layers down here because they are non-destructive. Also for these filters up here that do all kinds of visual effects, there is a live filter down here, not for all of them, but for most of them, they are not rendered into the pixel layer and you can turn them off or change the settings afterwards when you come back to the file. Now, when you want to use a brush, may that be a normal paintbrush or may it be a clone brush or an in-paint brush, you can use all of them on separate layers. And this is what I want to suggest to you. So create a new pixel layer down here. And then, for example, with the in-paint brush, set this to current layer and below as the source. So you are still fixing parts of the image, but the way it is fixed is painted onto a separate layer. And that means afterwards, you can simply change that layer or simply turn that layer off. Also, another way to work non-destructive in Affinity Photo is to use these layer effects. They allow you a really nice way to work with your images. For example, you can do Gaussian blur, you can do shadows, you can do color overlays and even gradient overlays. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. And there is even another method, and this is about your eraser brush. Don't use that on a pixel layer if you don't have to. Instead, what you want to do is to use a mask layer and then use a normal brush to paint on the mask layer to hide the areas you don't want to see instead of erasing them. Because then afterwards you can change your mask or turn the mask on or off if you want to use it differently. This brings us to our next mistake. And the big mistake is to only have these assets inside of your Affinity Photo file. What are assets? Well, they are, for example, 
pictures that you import in that. They are overlays. They are also brushes that you import. They are fonts that you're using. They are LUTs you're using. So anything that comes from the outside, any kind of asset that comes from the outside should be saved with that file in a separate folder in its original state, because then you can go back to that. This is especially true when you're working with fonts. Especially fonts have the problem that when you, for example, reset your computer or use the file on another computer and the font file is not there. Affinity Photo will tell you the name of the font, but there are a lot of fonts out there with the same name. So it's often kind of hard to actually find that font again. So when you download a font from the internet, save that font file in the project folder. Now the fifth big mistake is to not keep the affinity photo file and also not save versions of the affinity photo file. This is really, really important. If you do a lot of changes, you of course have a history that you can go back on, but the history is only saving so many steps. So once in a while, you want to go to file, save as, and then save it with a version number or write into the file name what the specific reason is why you saved on this step. And of course, you should keep all of these affinity photo files because if you don't have them anymore, you can't change anything about that image anymore. Even if those affinity photo files might be rather big, hard drive space is pretty cheap today. So keep them if you can. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and see you soon. Bye.